Have you been looking for a job? The Regional Center for Independent Living, the Departments of Youth Leadership and Employment, believe you can get the job and keep the job. This video is intended as an overview of worst and best case scenarios. It is by no means all-inclusive and there are many additional helpful resources for job readiness, some of which will be listed at the end of this program. As you know, there is a right way and a wrong way to do everything. Applying in person for a job, interviewing for a job, asking for reasonable accommodations you are entitled to under the law, and keeping the job, there's a basic blueprint for success for each of these stages in your career search. Let's take a look. When applying for a job in person, first impressions are critical. Take a look at this. Be sure that you fill in all the blanks. Make sure you fill it out front and back, and on the last page, write and print your name and date it. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, you got a pen? <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'll be over there. <laughs> Well, this first impression couldn't have been much worse. You'll notice Jesse was chewing gum. He didn't pay attention to the directions given to him by the receptionist. He didn't have a pen. And the shorts, the t-shirt, and the hat turned backward. Not professional. Then Jesse turned in an incomplete application. He did not have his critical information written down for easy reference. If you will be filling out the application at the place of employment, be sure that you have all necessary information needed to fill out the application, such as references, social security number, hours available, etc. Jesse gave back the partially completed application, and well, you see where that got him. So let's rewind and try this again. This time, Jesse was dressed neatly and professionally. He turned off his cell phone as soon as he entered the building. He was prepared with materials and a pen. He was courteous and polite and shook hands with the receptionist and then he thanked her. And best of all, he turned in a complete application. A couple of things to keep in mind when you are applying for a job. When you want to drop off a resume or fill out an application, always visit the business during off-peak hours. Showing up at the busiest time of the day or just before closing will only frustrate the person in charge of hiring. And then of course, first impressions matter. You want the people who are in charge of hiring to remember you in a positive way. What sort of impression do you think Jake makes here by arriving with his friend and having a shouting match in the parking lot? Oh, hang on. Did you feed the cat? Did you just feed the cat? No, I didn't. Why? Because I'm telling the truth. You so You just a speckled Even before entering the building, he has probably blown his chances of being considered. So have your resume and cover letter ready, which shows that you are mature and responsible. Be polite at all costs. Make eye contact as you are able. Dress neatly. You can be casual, but avoid overly trendy clothes, jeans, or possibly offensive items, such as a political t-shirt. Remove facial piercing that might be objectionable and keep tattoos covered. You never know. Once you do speak to a manager and fill out an application, follow up with them in a few days by calling or stopping by and restating your interest in the job. If you are applying for a job that you have heard about through a friend, be sure to mention how you heard about the job when you drop off your resume. And next, the interview.
You may be fortunate enough to have been granted an interview, but by no means does this mean you'll get the job. Take a look at how these interviews were blown. Disagreement with your coworker. Well, when I had a disagreement with them, I kind of fought them because, because the coworker had like said something about me. Okay. How'd that end for you? Do you still have that job? No, I do not. You do not have that job. That's that's shocking. Okay. Let's just say I didn't hold it too well. Maybe. Uh, well, I don't know. If you should even ask. But uh, do you have any questions for me? No. No. When do I get paid? Okay. Uh, I think we'll end it there. And uh, thank you for coming. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. There is good. Oh. Thank oh. you. Nice meeting you. This month. Yep. It was nice to. Nice to. Okay. Good. Nice to see you. Um, just follow, follow the door out that way. Okay. See you. And then we'll. That's it. Do not. Okay, good. Uh, Cindy will show you the way out. Take care. Okay. All right, take care. Very good. Show you the way out, okay? Oh. okay thanks, thanks so much for coming. Yep, not a chance. Not a chance. Okay, Steven. Take her easy. First of all, the candidate keeping the interviewer waiting, not off to a good start. And no handshake, weak handshake, and fist bumping? You've got to be kidding. Gum chewing, acting bored, giving short one-word answers when the employer is looking for information about who you are? None of these are good. And if you do no research on the company and ask no follow-up questions of the interviewer, you show you are not truly interested. And how about this one? cologne is not a good thing when you're going to an interview. Just a touch or simply a shower and clean clothes would have been enough. Hi, uh, Jared. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. How are you? Good, how are good. you? Why don't you good. come on in and we'll, uh, we'll do the interview, right. huh? Great. Steven, could you please tell me a little bit about yourself? Sure, Jason. I am currently in high school and I have part-time work. Okay. Um, I'm a 
participate in various clubs and activities such as band and the musicals and stuff like that. Okay. I hope to graduate in two years or so and I hope to go to college to, to uh, obtain a degree in music and composition. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Jared, why are you interested in working for this organization? Um, well, I've, I've heard lots about the reputation of this, this organization and I'm really, really excited to, to be a part of that. I enjoy, as I said, I enjoy you know, making a difference in the community and for the, for the members of our, our local society. So I'm, I mean, I'm interested in being a part of that. Okay. Great, thank you. Julian, what do you feel are your greatest strengths? I'm very organized. I have a great computer. I I am a team player and I'm a, a reliable person. Right, thank you. What do you think might be a weakness of yours? Oh, I'm not as comfortable with new Microsoft Office software, but I plan I'm going to the library looking up books and asking for help. Jake, why do you want to work for this organization? Uh, I did a lot of research on it, and I feel that it's the best fit for what I want to do in the new media field. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that uh, if given the chance, I will uh, will not disappoint. Um, and uh, this company is just an overall like great company because of their uh, innovative steps that they took toward uh, toward uh, film production. And I just feel. Great, thank you. Shanique, how do you feel school may have prepared you for this position? I had to do a lot of assignments and accomplish a lot of goals, and I think that school and work are similar. So I believe that I am successful in this job. Okay, great, thank you. Jared, can you tell me about a time you may have had a conflict with a supervisor or a coworker? Uh, and if so, how did you handle that conflict? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've, I have had conflicts in the past, you know, where it's usually a, it's usually a miscommunication kind of thing, you know. I, but my main and my approach, the things I try to do, are just talk to that person directly instead of going through kind of going going through the grapevine, so to speak. You know, I do like to you know just go right up to the coworker and mention mention the the thing that's bothering me, and then we'll try and talk it out and. Uh, and get through it. You know, sometimes we agree and sometimes it's a disagreement still, but we just work through it. Okay, great, thank you. What a difference a great interview makes. Arriving on time with a firm handshake, simple dressy clothes, no gum, cell phones off, prepared with a portfolio. Notice how the interviewees pay attention to the interviewer and show their interest. The answers to the interview questions, too, were all examples of the types of answers employers are looking for from potential employees. And note everyone had their portfolio. It can be one of your most valuable tools. In your schools, faith communities, and neighborhoods, you engage in activities that teach the very qualities employers seek. Dependability, honesty, punctuality, leadership, and initiative. Some of you have even received certificates, awards, positive letters, and honors that can be used to your advantage. You stand out when you bring all of this information to an interview in the form of a portfolio. A portfolio is a place for you to show the skills, strengths, and talents employers want. If you are an individual with a disability, it is acceptable and appropriate for you to request reasonable accommodations that you might need to perform a job you are interviewing for. Here is an example. Stephen, are you able to perform all the essential job functions with or without a reasonable accommodation? Yes, I'm able to perform all the necessary job functions, but I need a reasonable accommodation for a disability, and uh, that accommodation is This is a reasonable request and an employer should honor this. There are times where a request may be unreasonable and would cause an undue hardship for an employer. Like this example. 
Julian, are you able to perform all the essential functions of this job with or without a reasonable accommodation? Yes, but I would need an elevator because I know all your African out on the second floor. Otherwise, I won't be able to do it. Without the accommodation, I will not be able to perform the job. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be a reasonable accommodation. That might be fairly unreasonable for our company to provide an elevator. Um, so I'm going to have to conclude the interview now. I don't think this is going to be a good match for us. I'm really sorry. In this case, the request may be one that causes an undue hardship, but it is not okay for the employer to say he will not work with the potential employee and to end the interview. Instead, the scenario should go like this. Julian, I don't think that putting an elevator is going to be a reasonable accommodation. However, I do think that we would be able to relocate your office to the first floor, which is very accessible and would allow you to perform all the functions of your job. Okay. If you feel you've been discriminated against with regard to reasonable accommodations, we have listed some helpful resources for you at the end of this video. So when you're lucky enough to have joined the ranks of the employed, you still have to work hard to keep your job. There are a number of things that can jeopardize your chances of keeping the job. For example, not staying on task and not working hard, kicking back at your desk and chatting with coworkers, or watching music videos, not acceptable on the job. Let's check out a couple of scenarios that can make you lose favor with the boss. Are you guys kidding me? Come on, let's go. No, 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 no. Let's go. Come on, in my office. God, I hate my boss. I hate our boss. Yeah. He's a um, his office. It looks like heck. Yeah. I mean, it looks terrible. And uh, I mean, he he tells us to like clean up our workstations, and yet his yeah. it looks his, terrible. His looks like a dumpster. Yeah, a pig stuff. Yeah. Okay, can I come talk? Can you talk to me in my office, please? Okay, just the third time I've had to talk to you about this, and I'm afraid this time I'm gonna have to let you go. All right. I'm late. Hey man, hey, hold up. Where's the inventory list from yesterday? Somebody need to find it. Hello? <laughs> I'll find it for you. Yeah, you need to get on it. I got more consumers coming, man. Where the list at? Hey, you flipping pages, but I don't see nothing yet. What's, yeah. got, what's going on? I don't remember hmm? where I, I got to get some more help? I, couple, I gave it to you yesterday. Yeah, but all the side, just don't remember where it is. Well, In the first two examples, very little work was getting done. Playing around with equipment or standing around bad-mouthing the boss can get you in a lot of trouble. And if it continues to happen, as you saw with Jake, it can result in termination. And coming in late? Also not good. Chances are your boss will notice and will remember. And disorganization, as you saw with Stephen and Julian, does not make the supervisor happy. Being able to resolve conflicts at work is also critical. Oh, great. Not, oh, not, no, no, dude, I need not this guy again. No, dude, I need to copy. I need to make my copies. 
you've been doing this for like what, uh, two hours? How many pieces of paper? I do need to make these copies, man. These are important papers. Why? Why? For my boss. Why do you man. do this? You come in here every day, talking about you oh, need me? to make your copies. Me? me? I need to make my copies. Me? I'm making my copies. I never get in here. It's all because of you. you you're you're always in. The last thing a supervisor wants to do is have to step in and resolve conflict between employees. If you can work things out on your own, you will be perceived as mature and capable of good problem-solving skills. Communication and flexibility are important. Okay, um, it, I mean, it seems that you have to make a lot of copies, right? I mean, like, every time I need to make copies, you, you were here making copies, so, uh, we should uh, come up with some um, system so that we don't ha yeah. have this problem again. It's okay, man. You can make the copies. I, I noticed that I'll be making a lot of copies every day uh -huh. for my boss, but I understand that you got to make your copies. Well, no, I mean, like, uh, um, I think, like, uh, around noonish, you can make your copies, and then that, since yeah, I have to yeah, make... Yeah, uh, that, sounds, that sounds good. Yeah. yeah, man. Okay. All right. All right. Shake my hand. Good man. Good man. And on the job, never underestimate the power of a positive attitude. Being positive and friendly and caring about your coworkers will earn you their respect as well as the respect of management. Good, thank you very much. To summarize, keep your job by working hard and being a team player, by being on time, by being flexible and problem solving your way through any conflicts with your coworkers and having a good attitude. Good luck. 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 Three, go.
No, I'm really not ready.